First, there's the standard or normal lens. On a full-frame sensor, this is roughly a 50mm lens. A normal lens will reproduce a perspective that closely resembles that of which we see with the human eye. Then, there's the wide-angle lens. As the name suggests, a wide-angle lens captures a wider field of view. And finally, we have the telephoto lens. A telephoto lens captures a much narrower field of view than a normal or wide lens. Let's take a look at what effects these lenses will have on the human face if subject to camera distance is compensated to allow for similar framing. You'll notice when we jump from the normal lens to the telephoto lens that the background is pulled forward and our subject's facial features now appear more flat. However, when we move to the wide lens, the background is pushed back. We can now see more of the space, but facial features begin to warp. Let's see what that looks like in photo form. Pretty big difference, huh? Now let's take a look at how these lens effects are utilized in films. The graduate makes use of a telephoto lens when the hero of the story is running to the church to stop the woman he loves from marrying another man. This lens effectively compresses the space between the background and the foreground, which causes his movements to appear much slower. It gives the illusion that our hero is running towards a destination that he can't possibly reach in time. The Shining, on the other hand, made use of wide-angle lenses to create the opposite effect. As young Danny rides his bike through the hallways of the Overlook Hotel, the corridor seemed to stretch on for an eternity, effectively turning the already ominous hotel into an endless maze. The use of wide-angle lenses not only allow you to see more of the space in front of you, but they also exaggerate the distance between objects in the foreground and objects in the background all while providing a vast depth of field so that even faraway objects still appear clearly in focus. Hello, the use of high and low angles create a sense of shift in power. Subjects being looked down on can appear more weak and frail, while subjects being looked up at can appear larger and more intimidating. Tilting the camera's angle to create what's known as a dutch or canted angle typically causes a sense of unease, and Glorious Bastards makes use of all three of these. In 12 Years a Slave, a static shot is combined with a long take as we, the viewer, are forced to watch Solomon precariously tiptoeing with a noose around his neck. It's a powerful use of the combination for several reasons. Static shots act as a proscenium, leaving the viewer as a third-party observer, creating a wall between the audience and the action unfolding. We're no more capable of affecting any change within the scene than the other actors that drift in and out of the shot are. Static shots evoke a lack of mobility, both literally and figuratively. Solomon is stuck in his predicament much in the same way that we're stuck watching it unfold. The excessive length of the shot only serves to heighten our sense of awareness of both Solomon's discomfort and our own. If you're not familiar with the dolly zoom, it may not be immediately obvious that the camera itself is in motion. Dolly zooms work by dollying the camera either in or out while simultaneously zooming the lens in or out in the opposite direction. The effect that it has on the shot is quite startling. The subject appears to stay in one place while the background shifts. Because the effect is so overt, it's best reserved for important moments in the film. Like in Jaws, when Chief Brody's worst fears are realized. <laughs> And obviously you can use dollies and zooms independent of each other as well. The key is to know the difference between the two. The thing to remember with zooms is that your camera is remaining stationary while you're adjusting the focal length of the lens. So you're effectively compressing or decompressing the world around your character without changing the perspective from which you're seeing them. With a dolly on the other hand, you're physically moving your audience through the scene so that their own perspective is also changing as the camera moves. This can be used to reveal or conceal elements of a scene or even provide emphasis on important moments. The final shot that we're going to talk about is the tracking shot. The main difference in tracking shots is that they're motivated by the character's movement. They follow the character through the space, either alongside, in front of, or behind them. Tracking shots can be used to help establish a relationship between the character and their environment, or they can be used to help build tension in a scene. 